mastering audio, you have it in your Final Cut timeline, or your, your timeline, and you had used different microphones, different scenarios, different whatever. So the levels are all up and down. Yes. Can you talk about the importance of normalizing video and tricks and tips? Once you get to the mastering process um, for your audio after you've recorded your project, some important things to keep in mind um, and some tools to use are um, using compression. You can even out your levels, which will all be at you know different levels, um, but it's important not to over compress a sound and when you compress a sound you can actually see the sound wave and it becomes um, kind of stretched out and fatter and it, it'll eventually just be like one long block um, and if you over compress it, um, it it'll sound very unnatural it'll sound very hard um, but it is definitely a tool to play around with and there are many different compressors out there for you to try out if you notice the audio, something's wrong. Um, you might be recording with several different kinds of microphones in different locations, and you end up with audio where you have one day it's very, very loud, the next day it's very, very quiet, and then you have a sound effect that's at a medium level. It's good to go in and try to not only level out what you have recorded, but also keep in mind if you have somebody talking and you have music in the background, um, you can use compression to help duck um, the music down so the vocals have space to shine through and be clear. And another tool you can use as you're editing to make some space for different audio elements is EQ. And you can carve out little spaces in the frequencies where a human voice, it'll usually sound between about 5K and 7K in frequency. So 5,000 um, to 7,000, I believe kilohertz, might have to check that. Um, and then something else, a bird chirping might be slightly in a higher range. So both of those sounds can coexist in and it'll sound to the ear that they both have space. They're not cutting over each other. You can hear them clearly. Whereas if you had um, a, a certain person playing like a bass guitar at a lower level and there was also another sound in that same frequency range, it's going to start sounding very muddled and very full. So it's good to be able to go into the EQ and carve out little um, spaces for certain things. You don't have to overdo it. You'll, your ears will be able to hear the differences, but you might attack your um, background sounds first and kind of get out any you know high frequencies you don't need um, and always go back and listen to the mix again with everything together and between EQ, compression for ducking the vocals and also of course initially getting your levels um, from your different microphones to be leveled out, you should have some workable sound by that time. <laughs> so. um, what's something every videographer should know about sound? I, I think they should know that if you can, if you have the equipment for it, it's best to get the sounds you want at the end at the beginning of the production not just get whatever sound you can and then try to manipulate it later um, because the better you can get the sound in the beginning the, the better no matter what you do to it it'll be at the end um, and also if you're recording and you're not completely sure of the direction of the video that you're going in um, I would recommend recording it without any effects on to it um, and if you can having different microphones um, split up on different elements so then when you go to mix it in post-production you have more options um, and try to have the mic somewhat isolated but you know depending on your production a little bit of outer room sound